I'll just wait a minute for all of the folks to uh, pull into the webinar. Welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Gallagher. I'm the director of the Global Development Policy Center at Boston University. Uh, and I'm honored to do another webinar with our friends and colleagues at the South Center uh, in, in Geneva. Today's event is called The Case for Policy Space, Bangladesh's Pharmaceutical Sector and Access to Medicines. <clears throat> in what otherwise has been a a fairly dark year, perhaps a fairly dark year and a half as the COVID-19 crisis continues to rage across the world and the multilateral system is falling short in combating the virus, Bangladesh is a bright spot. In March of this year, the country celebrated 50, 50 years, excuse me, 50, 50 years of independence. And I'm proud to say, in, in addition to being uh, the director of the Global Development Policy Center at Boston University, I'm also a member of the Committee for Development Policy at the United Nations. And one of the great things that uh, we did this year was vote to recommend that Bangladesh graduate from the LDC status or the least developed country status. What was once often depicted as a country that was severely lacking in terms of its development uh, and one of the most vulnerable countries in the world, it is now one of South Asia's global growth miracles. Indeed, Bangladesh now has a GDP per capita larger than India or Pakistan, uh, larger, longer life expectancy than either of those two countries. It's a leader on climate change policy uh, and surging forward. A cornerstone of its development strategy has been the recognition and, and execution of policies for structural transformation. Uh, the key to the development has been diversifying the economy into industrial capacity, technological innovation, and beyond. What often gets a lot of attention as part of that strategy is the incredible developments in the textiles and apparel sector, but also the pharmaceutical sector in Bangladesh deserves great credit. 97% of domestic demand is met by Bangladeshi companies in the, in the sector, and they also have significant exports to other least developed countries. These sectors in Bangladesh have a significant amount of value added, backward linkages for, and forward linkages throughout the rest of the economy, and are a bevy for employment and knowledge-based innovation. As, we learn, as we'll learn today, uh, Bangladesh's development in this sector is largely because of a real visionary government and a long-term industrial strategy that helped build this sector. And it really paid off. But given where the world now sits, the Bangladesh story is now even bigger than Bangladesh. <clears throat> after, uh, after understanding and, and watching how the pharmaceutical industry has been uh, dominated by a handful of countries and firms in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, crisis, that are hiding behind a handful of patents and export controls, we watch how that has choked the ability of countries to access the treatments and technologies to attack the virus in every context. Now, there's conversations beyond Bangladesh on how other countries can be Bangladesh. In fact, here in the United States, uh, an, uh, one of the most bipartisan bills uh, between Senators Elizabeth Warren and Marco Rubio is how the United States can try to mimic some of those policies and create their own industrial strategies to build more of an pharmaceutical capabilities here in the United States and some of the production processes. But yet Bangladesh and the rest of the world are a bit of a, at a bit of a crossroads. Bangladesh was able to harness uh, and put together many of these industrial strategies uh, and put it on the global pharmaceutical map precisely because it really took advantage of its LDC status. And one of the major things that a country uh, has as, as, as an LDC is they don't have to adhere to many of the 
uh, uh, measures within the World Trade Organization's trade-related intellectual property rules. However, now as, as Bangladesh graduates, it will have to face moving into many of those rules, which might, have, might make it more difficult for the country uh, to be able to continue the trajectory in the sector. It also might make it more difficult for other countries around the world to mimic what Bangladesh does, because if you are the United States or uh, Bolivia uh, or South Africa, uh, you already adhere to many of those rules, which make it more difficult to have the innovations and vision that Bangladesh had. These are the questions that we'll be discussing in, today, in today's seminar, where we launch two reports, one by the GDP Center and one by the, by the South Center. I will first introduce the uh, GDP Center, um, and the, uh, this was a collaborative research effort with a number of our own researchers here at Boston University, and we were very excited to do this with Professor uh, Mustafa Sir Rahman, uh, who's a distinguished fellow at the Center for Policy Dialogue in Bangladesh. Professor Rahman is currently serving as a distinguished fellow at the Center for Policy Dialogue, which is one of the leading think tanks in South Asia. Prior to his current position, he was the executive director of the, of the center and was a member of the Dhaka University Senate between 2009 and 2013. He's been awarded the prestigious Ibrahim Memorial Gold Medal by the University of Dhaka for excellence in his research. Uh, he currently is a Senate member of the Dhaka University and a syndicate member uh, of the Brock University. He's a series editor of South Asia Economic Policy Studies published by Springer and a member of the editorial board of the Rising Powers and Global Governance. He'll be accompanied by Rachel Thrasher, who's a researcher and legal scholar here at the Global Development Policy Center. She received a JD and a master's degree in international relations, both from here at Boston University. She works on policy issues related to trade and investment agreements, policy space for development, intellectual policy, intellectual property and access to medicines, and the climate impacts of trade and investment treaties. She's taught at numerous universities in the Boston era, and she's the author of a brand new book that has just been released by Anthem Press called Constraining Development, the Shrinking of Policy Space in the International Trade Regime. Uh, and she currently teaches international trade law at Boston University. I'll hand it over to the Professor Rahman and Rachel to present the Boston University study. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, dear audience, uh, on behalf of our team, uh, let me register my deep gratitude for this honor to present with uh, Rachel uh, our findings. Uh, uh, I think that the discussion that will be taking place today is, is very important. Uh, we are passing through the pandemic. Uh, at the same time, for my country, which Kevin has introduced so graciously, uh, we are uh, uh, very proud that Bangladesh is slated for graduation out of the group of LDCs in 2026. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, starting our journey as, as, as a non-LDC developing um, uh, country. Uh, in the context of the discussion that we have, it, um, I think it is very important to keep in mind that graduation will have important implications for the graduating LDCs. Uh, seven uh, graduating, uh, seven LDCs are now slated for graduation. Uh, 16 are in the pipeline uh, to be graduated very soon. So this is a large cohort of countries. And we have to uh, think about what will be the implications of graduation for this country. Kevin mentioned that Bangladesh's uh, life expectancy, which is at uh, 74, is, 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 is the longest in, in, in South Asia and among uh, um, many of the developing countries. So I think that uh, this, uh, uh, the discussion that we will have is also very important, whether uh, the achievements that we have will be sustainable. Next slide, please. And we are very happy uh, to have our permanent representative, uh, uh, His Excellency Mr. Mustafizur Rahman with us, uh, because uh, the discussion that uh, we will be having today in that context He's playing a leading role in the, in the, uh, in the, in the WTO in terms of uh, 
uh, extending the facilities that uh, LDCs have, the international support mechanisms, uh, uh, measures for another uh, th 13 years, the proposal that has been floated on behalf of, uh, of the LDCs. Now, pharmaceutical sector, as uh, Kevin has very rightly mentioned, is one of the flagship sectors in Bangladesh. It has contributed to our economy in the value addition, in industrialization, beyond textile and, and, and clothing. And, uh, and, and as Kevin mentioned, uh, our domestic market is $3 billion, 95% is catered to by uh, the domestic uh, pharmaceutical industry. We also uh, um, uh, um, export to, next slide please. Uh, we also export to uh, about 130 uh, countries. And I must also say that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the flexibilities that we are enjoying as an, as an LDC, uh, uh, thanks to the trips and public health decision of the, of the WTO, is benefiting not only Bangladesh, uh, but also the other LDCs where we are exporting. So, so once uh, Bangladesh graduates, if we do not have this, uh, these flexibilities, then it's just not Bangladesh that will have to uh, uh, buy their patents and licenses, uh, uh, but, but also that many of the LDCs which depend on Bangladesh's export, and uh, we export 61% of the total LDC exports, uh, and uh, uh, many LDCs uh, are dependent on cheap exports from Bangladesh. So those LDCs will also uh, uh, be uh, suffering. Now, next please. Now, uh, what we have uh, 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 in experienced in the context of Bangladesh is that, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, the derogation that we have enjoyed in terms of the trips and pharmaceuticals, it has allowed the policy space uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, industrialize, in order to build the pharmaceutical capacity within the country, to take the national drug policy, uh, to, uh, to impose bans in order to develop our own uh, domestic industries, to uh, suspend pharmaceutical patents, to uh, undertake the, uh, the uh, uh, policies and uh, investment policies to build our, our pharmaceutical industry in a way uh, which, um, uh, which, thanks to the uh, uh, derogations that we have been enjoying as an LDC, has allowed us a lot of policy space. Uh, we have been able to uh, uh, provide subsidies. We have been able to provide cash incentives th uh, thanks to the flexibilities. We have been able to, uh, in order to have bet uh, uh, broader and, and greater domestic value addition, to, uh, to have domestic uh, content requirements. So uh, there are a number of investment uh, and, and policy uh, uh, autonomy that we have been able to uh, apply, uh, which has allowed us to have this, uh, this, this industry. And I also would like to uh, say that uh, this is one industry where uh, we also have uh, uh, many female professionals who are who are working here. Now, once we graduate uh, and then after 2026, these uh, flexibilities are not there, obviously it will have an important uh, implication for Bangladesh. Also at a time when we are trying to build our pharmaceutical industry, we import about uh, uh, the, the, the active uh, uh, pharmaceutical in ingredients industry, the API. We import about $1 billion uh, uh, of imports and 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 uh, in order to be competitive in the global market, we are trying to uh, uh, have more value addition and uh, and try to build the API. But we haven't uh, been able to really start those. So we need some time. So uh, in that context, I think the discussion uh, that what uh, implications it will have on the industry on our investment is very important. And as uh, Rachel will now. Uh, uh, um, uh, discuss that many of the flexibilities that we are now enjoying, which has enabled us to, to build up our industry and to uh, make it export oriented, to cater to the domestic market and help the other LDCs as well, will not be allowed once uh, we, we graduate under the current dispensation. And in that context, in fact, the, the extension that has been uh, requested in the WTO becomes very important. So in order to take us to the, uh, to the uh, uh, various provisions, which will be WTO incompatible, 
I would like to uh, request Rachel to take us to, through the next slides. Please, Rachel, on to you. Mm, thank you, Mr. Officer. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, as a part of trying to uh, our attempt to understand exactly what constraints Bangladesh might be facing um, as they get ready, as it gets ready for graduation, um, we took a look at um, um, a few different categories of treaty of treaty terms of trade and investment treaty terms. Um, the first this first slide demonstrates inconsistency or some some measure of inconsistency with international intellectual property rules which are often um, um, found in the, the WTO Agreement on Trade-Related intellectual property, um, intellectual property Rules, and as well as in other free trade agreements outside of that. So in the first place, Bangladesh's current intellectual property laws are, are as written out of compliance with the, the TRIPS, the, the, excuse me, the Trade-Related Intellectual Property Rules Agreement uh, term, which requires 20 years. Um, under Bangladesh, in Bangladesh's law, it's currently 16 years, although the proposed law um, that they have in place that may go into effect later will correct that. Um, nevertheless, as Professor Mustafa Sur mentioned uh, just a moment ago, there has been a suspension of pharmaceutical patents for the time being, um, beginning in 2008, and they will have to remove that suspension um, in order to comply with the TRIPS agreement, as well as to comply with other free trade agreements um, that they would possibly want to become a part of uh, in the future. Um, you can see the example is, is the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is just one of the regional agreements um, in, uh, in near Bangladesh. Um, uh, other intellectual property rules that may violate the TRIPS agreement would be uh, um, certain patent revocation procedures um, that give preference to the Bangladesh industry um, and allow Bangladesh uh, pharmaceutical firms to um, more easily uh, revoke international patents, um, assuming they're in, no longer suspended, as well as a working requirement that requires that the patentee manufacture and or import their product into the country within four years of receiving a patent. Now that's a, a bit of a technical a provision. However, that a, a very similar provision uh, found in Brazil was recently challenged at the WTO. So it's very likely that this sorts of this sort of requirement, if it were to come before um, a dispute at the WTO, would be found to violate those rules. Um, outside of the the TRIPS agreement. Um, as you can see here, almost all of these provisions would, would violate the intellectual property rules in, in most of the modern free trade agreements that you find. Um, and you can see that we have the bilateral investment treaties um, that Bangladesh has already signed, and they're, they're, they don't cover intellectual property, so that uh, column is not super relevant, but it is on this page. So um, the other sets of rules that we took a look at are rules governing trade and investment. Um, and, the, and so intellectual property is not the only area or even maybe the most important area where um, that Bangladesh has leveraged in order to build up their, their uh, intellectual, or excuse me, their pharmaceutical industry. So this, is, this table is an illustrative list um, from a much longer one in our paper, which you're, um, I'm sure have access to, of the policies that Bangladesh has put in place to address their need to build endogenous capacity and create a new pharmaceutical sector from the ground up. So you can see import bans, which were used earlier on in, uh, in the 1980s, especially to keep multinational corporations from supplying medicines that was, were already available, um, already manufactured within Bangladesh. Um, those import bans would be violate would violate um, rules against quantitative restrictions in both the trips excuse me in both the WTO rules that the general agreement on trade and on on tariffs and trade and um, and uh, other free trade agreements that are similar um, and that in fact go much much more beyond what the WTO rules are. So uh, in addition, requiring uh, foreign firms to manufacture locally. Um, local manufacturing requirements, or to enter into joint ventures with domestic investors. Um, um, those types of provisions are not directly addressed under the WTO, but are expressly prohibited under the investment provisions of most modern free trade agreements if Bangladesh were to enter into them. 
um, tax and cash benefits, which were mentioned previously, um, that are contingent on domestic value added or on export performance, which has been a key uh, cornerstone of many of Bang Bangladesh's policies, um, would be prohibited under the WTO rules and prohibited under other FTAs, free trade agreements. Um, export performance requirements for foreign manufacturers, um, specifically for foreign manufacturers, would, would likewise be a violation of, of these agreements. So you can see in this table there are some flexibilities under the WTO, many more flexibilities under the bilateral investment treaties that Bangladesh has been a part of. Um, um, but by and large, these policies that Bangladesh has put in place um, have um, will conflict with the rules once once Bangladesh is required to comply with those rules. Um, so um, the take home point is clear and it's already been said, but I will reiterate for Bangladesh, LDC graduation is likely to be very challenging. And in addition to that, graduation will be challenging for others, especially in the immediate wake of the pandemic, which is, is likely to continue for some time. Um, Bangladesh's present and proposed policies um, conflict with international trade and investment and intellectual property rule. And for Bangladesh, that means a possible threat of uh, international disputes, as well as an undermining of, of their ongoing industri industry goals. Um, in, in some cases, compliance with free trade agreements has even led to deindustrialization, and that would be a real threat for Bangladesh in this context. Um, moreover, other LDCs who want to emulate Bangladesh will face similar challenges, um, um, uh, either because they already have similar policy toolkits in place or because they're seeking to, to use Bangladesh as a, as a model and, and try to attempt to industrialize in the way that they have. So this, um, this further evidence of the challenges facing lower, this is further evidence of the challenges facing lower and middle income countries. Those are already subject to WTO and other trade agreement rules. And all, for all of them, as they face the slow march toward industrialization, these rules really get in the way of those attempts. So in view of all of this evidence, the ministers at MC12, um, at, the, at the 12th ministerial conference should favorably consider the proposal, which Professor, Professor Rahman and His Excellency will, will also mention, um, the proposal submitted by Bangladesh and other LDCs to extend the waiver um, and international, for international support measures for LDCs um, and continue to extend them the flexibility they need to continue to industrialize. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to both of you for <clears throat> presenting that study. I am now gonna hand it over to my uh, longtime friend and colleague, uh, Carlos Correa. Professor Carlos Correa is the executive director of the South Center. He's a renowned international authority on intellectual property and technology issues. He's both a lawyer and economist from the University of Buenos Aires, and he holds a PhD in law from the University of Buenos Aires. He began his term as South Center executive director in 2018. And prior to that, he was special advisor on trade and intellectual property there. He's worked with the Argentine government and has been the director of the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies on Industrial Property and Economics at the University of Buenos Aires. He's a member of the UK Commission on Intellectual Property Rights, the Commission on Intellectual Property Rights, Innovation and Public Health, established by the World Health Assembly and the FAO panel of eminent experts on ethics in food and agriculture. I hand it over to Carlos Correa. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Let me just reiterate, uh, South Center is very pleased to co-organize this event with uh, the Center. And so we are very happy to have a new opportunity to work together on this uh, very important issue. Certainly, I think we are all impressed by the enormous progress that Bangladesh has made, has allowed it to, uh, to graduate, as it was mentioned. And in particular, in the pharmaceutical sector, um, Bangladesh, it was, it was mentioned, was able to develop a big brand industry, which uh, has, is not only able to supply for domestic uh, domestic demand, but also it was mentioned to export to many countries. So Bangladesh has also become, as was the case of India, uh, the pharmacy of developing countries. And as it was mentioned by Professor Rahman, it's very important to keep the progress that um, Bangladesh has, has done so far and to ensure that uh, there is sustainability 
in the development of the pharmaceutical industry. As was mentioned, one of the factors that uh, helped Bangladesh to develop the pharmaceutical industry was the waiver in relation to intellectual property that was allowed for least developed countries. And, and certainly this is one of the factors as it was previously the case for India that has permitted the government and the local pharmaceutical industry to make such a significant progress. But now, as you know, with uh, the graduation of uh, Bangladesh, this advantage will, will erode unless uh, there is the possibility to continue. It was already a request to do that, but th this was not a successful one. But then it's very important to see how the pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh can continue to make progress. So in this context, and a point request by the government of Bangladesh, the South Center undertook a study that was authored by my colleague, Nirmala Sayam, who will make a presentation on, on this study, in order to look specifically at um, the situation of Bangladesh in the new emerging context in which it will be obliged to comply with the TRIPS obligations. As we know, the TRIPS agreement introduced a number of rigorous standards for protection of intellectual property, in particular in the area of patents, which are so relevant in pharmaceutical industry. And therefore there is, there is a very justified concern about the implications that the full implementation of the TRIPS agreement may have in connection with uh, further development, uh, even the protection of the current development of the pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh. Uh, this study will be presented by Narmaria Sayam, a colleague uh, in, in the South Center. He has uh, worked a lot in the area of intellectual property, health, traditional knowledge, and other areas. Uh, let me just uh, advance three main conclusions of his study, uh, although I will uh, let him to make a full presentation uh, of the study. The first one is that uh, quite clearly, in order to continue to support the development of pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh, it will be very important uh, to keep the flexibilities of the TRIPS agreement in use when uh, Bangladesh is um, mandated to implement the TRIPS agreement in full. These flexibilities, as you know, include exceptions to, uh, to patent rights, such as the border exception, includes compulsory licensing or government use, includes the possibility of pre-grant or post-grant opposition to the grant of patents. These and other flexibilities will be very important for, uh, for Bangladesh to consider when um, it, is, it is under the mandate to implement the CHIPS agreement. Secondly, and in, in, the same, in, in the same context, um, there will be a need to, uh, to review, to modernize the intellectual property system in Bangladesh, in particular, the, the patent law. Um, and in this regard, the South Center will continue to be available to, uh, to consider with the government of Bangladesh, which are the best practices in developing countries in order to implement the patent law in particular or data protection, which is also required under TRIPS agreement in a manner which is compatible with the needs of the pharmaceutical industry and other industries that need to make progress in the context of the policy framework, which is uh, imposed by, by the TRIPS agreement. So this is a very important work to be done in order to align intellectual property policy as, uh, as far as possible with the national uh, industrial policies in Bangladesh. And one third and important conclusion, this was already anticipated by Professor Rahman, is about uh, the advance which may be necessary in terms of uh, producing active uh, pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs. Uh, in the case of Bangladesh, as it is the case of many other developing countries, progress in pharmaceutical industry was laid by formulation of medicines. And in fact, today, even in India, there is a situation in which APIs, uh, pharmaceutical active ingredients in India, are largely imported uh, while India uh, finalizes, terminates the medicine. So this is not an uncommon situation, but it will really be very important to see how after graduation, it will be possible for Bangladesh to continue to make progress in the production, not only of uh, final medicines, but also of uh, APIs. 
So um, I will let now my, my colleague, uh, Nirmalia Sayam, to make a presentation of, of the study. Nirmalia, please. Thank you, uh, Professor Correa, and uh, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Uh, good morning, wherever you are. I'll just uh, share my screen with you. As, uh, I believe you can uh, view it now, right? So um, this study, as Professor Correa mentioned, was prepared by us a couple of years ago at the request of the government of Bangladesh. And uh, it was an interesting opportunity for us to also visit Bangladesh and get a first-hand experience by talking to um, 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 people from the pharmaceutical industry as well as in the government um, and, uh, to, to understand uh, certain practices uh, that um, they have adopted and how the industry has developed. And so, so uh, um, the pathway has been very interesting and it also demonstrated to us some of the, uh, the, the challenges that would need to be addressed in order to make the industry uh, stronger and sustainable uh, in the post-graduation period. So um, the objective of the study uh, was uh, to, to understand the impact of um, implementation of patent protection for pharmaceutical products after LDC graduation and uh, what um, uh, measures could be adopted in preparation for graduation, including um, uh, at the, at the, both at the domestic as well as the, at the multilateral level in the context of patents. Uh, this has been already um, quite um, uh, well, ex uh, well explained uh, by Professor Rahman as well, uh, that Bangladesh, uh, in terms of its public health situation, has made, made um, tremendous progress uh, in terms of uh, greater life expectancy, re reduced infant mortality, maternal mortality, which, are, which have been uh, major indicators um, uh, in, in the determination of its progress towards um, LDC graduation. At the same time, uh, the disease profile in Bangladesh has been changing. Um, with um, uh, progress, uh, with economic development, there has been a rise in incidences of uh, cardiovascular non-communicable diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes. And Bangladesh also has a major burden of uh, tuberculosis, including drug-resistant tuberculosis, which uh, um, it shares with its neighbors in the region. Um, these diseases account for about 60% of all deaths in, by some estimates. Uh, I, and for example, in the case of TB, there are over 60 million TB patients uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, the question is, um, will, will uh, affordable treatments uh, or can affordable treatments be made available going forward after LDC graduation? Uh, to cater to this, um, uh, uh, to these therapeutic area challenges that Bangladesh faces and will continue to face um, for, for some time. Now, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, what we what we um, what, what we see is that there are um, more than 150 local firms which uh, have more than 90%. In fact, I think Professor Mustafizur Rahman pointed out that they have a 97% share of the domestic market. Um, of these, uh, the top 10 local firms uh, account for more than 70% of the market share. And that is uh, quite, uh, quite unique uh, in the context of developing countries as such. Um, the, the industry uh, manufactures more than 450 generic drugs in different th therapeutic classes, but these are mostly simple formulation drugs. Um, in terms of patented drugs, which, and that, by that I mean drugs which have been patented in territories outside Bangladesh and therefore by multinational companies, uh, these drugs can constitute less than 10% of the market. Um, now, uh, I mentioned TB as a major public health challenge. Now, it's interesting to note that some of the, the critical drugs patented abroad, for example, for the treatment of TB, betaquilin, galamanid, um, these are um, not manufactured in Bangladesh. There is also import dependency on technologically intensive products, uh, including biological drugs and complex uh, formulation drugs as well. Though um, uh, in, uh, uh, over the past few years, some local firms have been producing technologically intensive complex drugs um, and have also ventured into uh, manufacturing of active pharmaceutical ingredients, 
but but the scale of that that uh, engagement and that activity is still limited and needs to expand substantially going forward now in terms of uh, policy measures the the develop the growth of the industry so far and again professor mustafizur rahman referred to this uh, has been supported by a number of policy interventions uh, starting with the drug ordinance of 1982 um import manufacture important sales of irras irrational drugs were banned which created a market space uh, uh which was um uh, to the credit of the local industry uh, amply uh, 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 wherein the demand was amply met by the local industry and was able to supply affordable uh, drugs at very affordable prices the national drug policy of 2005 also allowed enabled manufacturing of drugs under licensing contract contracts from mncs Uh, and this has allowed um, uh, some sort of uh, 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 engagement on the part of the local pharmaceutical industry with multinational uh, uh, corporations perhaps also engage in some technological learning um in 2008 pharmaceutical patent protection was suspended uh, however as we will see later uh, the patent law itself still allows as such the grant of uh, patents on pharmaceutical products um and then there were there, there were significant policy interventions made through national drug policy and the api policy of 2018 the point here is that these are very recent policy initiatives and uh in order to bear fruit uh more time will be required as uh, professor rahman has also pointed out and that uh, that time would necessarily therefore Uh, be dependent on the outcome of what happens at the multilateral level in terms of um, uh, discussions that are uh, ongoing in Geneva in the WTO on um, extension of LDC specific support measures including in the context of trips agreement now if you look at the patent law um bangladesh's patent law um, essentially uh, the, the patents and designs act of 1911 still retains uh, the the um, uh, sta uh, standards of protection and the rules that uh, uh, as they were framed in 1911 uh, in terms of designs uh, those, those those elements of the law were amended but the patents uh, 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 chapters uh, of the law have uh, not gone through any substantial amendment so in terms of uh, pharmaceutical uh, patentable subject matter pharmaceutical products are included uh, within the scope of what is a patentable subject matter in bangladesh there is no per se or specific exclusion for example if you if you go back to the experience of india in the 1970s india also had the same law which was inherited from the colonial administration um, in 1970 the patent law was amended to uh, 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 to, to uh, essentially limit patenting uh, at that point of time because the trips agreement was not applicable Uh, uh to to process patents and not to product patents on pharmaceuticals and for um a, a limited term not 20 years uh currently bangladesh provides a, a term of 16 years uh, but it also the patent law uh, itself also provides that the term can be extended by 5 to 10 years now here what is noteworthy is that there is no requirement in the trips agreement for example for, to to um grant the an extension of the patent term uh so while bangladesh would need to um, become compliant with the minimum term of 20 years in terms of trips once uh, ldc graduation happens um the uh, existing provision in the patent law which allows extension of the patent term by 5 to 10 years uh, depending on the discretion of the concerned authorities would also have to be possibly revisited because this is not a requirement under the trips agreement um there is only one exception that is currently provided for in the patent law uh, to uh, uh, and that is for the use of the patented invention for navigation or in a foreign vessel in bangladesh so for example the regulatory review exception uh, uh, the research exception etc are not uh, 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 currently present in the law uh in uh, one of the critical issues to consider in the context of pharmaceutical patents is that it, is the capacity of the patent office to conduct uh, examination of the patent applications we are assuming that once bangladesh graduates from ldc status there will be a significant uh, rise in the number of pharmaceutical patent applications filed in bangladesh 
Bangladesh at the same time is also, I, I understand, con considering accession to the Patent Cooperation Treaty of FIFO, which uh, will make it a part of the international system of filing of patent applications, through which there can only can be a uh, can be a, 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 a tremendous surge in the number of patent applications filed uh, that would also enter Bangladesh, including in the pharmaceutical sector. Now, in terms of existing capacity. Uh, what we found in our study is that um, the examination capacity currently, Bangladesh does not uh, examine pharmaceutical patents at the moment, these are suspended, but current examination capacity uh, is, is very limited. The total number of examiners is, is very handful, about, uh, about 10 or, or 20 at the most. Uh, and uh, there is only one uh, examiner who, who, had, who is skilled in uh, chemistry. And that is a sector which will bear the brunt of most of the pharmaceutical um, patent applications coming in. So there is a need for significant capacity augmentation um, a human, in terms of human resources uh, in, in, in this area. Now, in terms of uh, um, compulsory licensing, the patent law currently provides for uh, compulsory licensing, uh, but uh, there is no provision, for example, on uh, government use authorization. And that, that is another, um, um, uh, 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 means through which uh, full utilization of the troops flexibilities could be materialized. Similarly, uh, the, the, the current patent law has no provision on uh, when a patent right would uh, could be considered to have been exhausted. Uh, and it would be in, uh, um, advisable that in the, in the new revision of the patent law, um, uh, 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 an international doctrine of exhaustion is adopted, which will enable parallel importation um, uh, uh, to, to, to be more um, easily achieved in the context of pharmaceuticals uh, and access um, if, if the, the need so arises. Um, if we look at the patenting activity with regard to pharmaceuticals in Bangladesh, though uh, it, is interest, it, it is quite interesting to note, um, while Bangladesh has suspended pharmaceutical patent applications since 2008, what we found is that patent applications have nevertheless been filed in Bangladesh. And our um, uh, understanding or, or, or assumption here is that they, these uh, patents are being filed speculatively in the anticipation that um, the uh, suspension will come to, come to an end uh, at the end of a transition period, for example, our opponent will see graduation. And um, then these applications will have to be examined. And some of these applications will have a life, um, at least currently I, I have listed some of them. For example, for delaminate, uh, there are composition applications and on combination of delaminate with other TB drugs. It's, this is a drug for the treatment of drug resistant tuberculosis. Uh, there are two patent applications in Bangladesh which expire in 2026. Um, th this is what we know. There could be others filed, which, which perhaps we, uh, we, we uh, have not yet been published and we don't know. Um, in, uh, there is, for example, one patent application on a combination uh, antiretroviral drug for treatment of HIV AIDS, Dictegravir, Tenophobia, and Tricitabai in oral dosage form, which uh, has a patent application filed, till to, uh, filed uh, which would expire if granted in 2036. Well, uh, ten, I would assume that would be 10 years after graduation. So um, given uh, uh, one of the interesting things we, we found uh, in terms of this big gravid example, for, for instance, is that in Bangladesh, um, uh, the generic companies are producing a combination of tenofovir, but they're not producing it with this in the specific combination that you have in this patent application. And already it seems to suggest that the possibility that this patent could become a reality one day, this, which has been a, a, applied for, um, suggests that uh, there has been a, 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 a business decision perhaps taken by the companies uh, to, to try other combinations, but not this specific combination. Now this uh, is suggestive of, of the kind of impact patenting activity on pharmaceuticals could have on the decisions of, uh, of business house uh, of Bangladeshi generic companies uh, to uh, develop generic drugs because they, they would obviously not uh, like to get um, uh, sort of uh, bogged down into patent litigations, etc., and try to uh, have as uh, uh, sort of, uh, as facilitative an environment as possible. 
Um, there are um, more than 1,000 patent applications currently in Bangladesh in the mailbox, um, and it could be higher actually. So uh, because there could be others filed even as we speak, which we don't know about, and and eventually these would uh, possibly have uh, to be examined and granted in Bangladesh. Uh, it is interesting to note in terms of future projections that a, a study by, uh, by um, FIT Solutions on, on the prospect of patented drugs market in Bangladesh has forecasted that it is expected to grow this market of, for patented drugs. And these would largely be for the complex formulations, cancer drugs, cardiovascular, TB drugs. These are likely to grow by about 14% um, around 2028. So what are the implications post-graduation in this context? Um, the TRIPS transition period will definitely end for Bangladesh and it will end immediately upon LDC graduation. There is no grace period that is currently uh, uh, available uh, as such uh, in this regard. Bangladesh will have to then implement TRIPS obligations and resume grant of patents on pharmaceutical substances with uh, consequent implications uh, uh, being that there is likely to be a surge in pharmaceutical patent applications, including perhaps secondary patent applications, um, evergreening patents which are nearing their expiry. And that would mean that um, strong examination, stricter application of examination standards, strong stricter application of patent definition of patentability standards in the new law would be, would be necessary, uh, in addition to augmenting examination capacity of the patent office. Um, we have also uh, 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 mentioned that perhaps there is need to uh, exercise caution in terms of accession to the Patent Corporation Treaty uh, at, at the same time uh, immediately upon graduation. Um, there could also be a chilling effect on the freedom to operate for generic manufacturers in terms of developing complex formulations as well uh, as um, uh, augmenting capacities to uh, manufacture uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients, wherein the import dependency of Bangladesh um, is, is, is a major factor which needs to be uh, overcome. Um, and all of these factors together, if they, if, if they um, um, play, play out, then obviously the impact on affordability and access to medicines for uh, the patients in Bangladesh uh, would be adverse. So in, in that context, um, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we look at three uh, critical points in terms of uh, which need to be addressed uh, as a way forward. First, uh, there is a need to negotiate an extension of the TRIPS-related support measures available for LDCs for a period beyond graduation. And um, while uh, this has uh, not been uh, agreed upon in the context of the uh, recent extension of the um, transition period that the TRIPS Council uh, uh, agreed to. Uh, it has been also understood uh, during, as part, during that negotiation that this issue will continue to remain on the table and uh, at, the, at the General Council and part of the Ministerial Conference decision possibly. Um, may, uh, there would also be a need to make full use of the flexibilities that are available to um, all WTO members and Bang uh, even after Bangladesh graduates, Bangladesh can ma uh, make use of these flexibilities and, and integrate those in its domestic law and policy. So integrate this in the new draft patent law and the national IP policy and ensure policy coherence uh, there with the, the, the national pharmaceutical policy, uh, policy uh, and, and, and or, the, or the drug policy as it were. There should be also complementary industrial policies to uh, and government support uh, to the pharmaceutical sector to develop and expand capacities in complex formulations and APIs. So, so that, is, that is something though that can only happen once the policy environment is there. Once you have the, the stage set with the uh, negotiated, for example, um, transition period being available uh, uh, and, and then these, these mechanisms could then play out uh, on that stage. So I would stop here and uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take them. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rimalia, for the, the interpretation of uh, the study. I would just like to uh, highlight the importance of uh, the patentability standards. So it, it is very crucial for Bangladesh in the future to apply the patentability standards in a rigorous manner. 
in order to avoid the grant of uh, what, what are called evergreening patents or secondary patents that may limit significantly the capacity of Bangladesh to continue in this development path in the pharmaceutical industry. As, as we know, there are many old drugs on which new patent applications are filed. And if granted, these uh, new patents may actually block uh, even, even for existing products, products which are currently being produced in, in Bangladesh, um, the further commercialization of, of, of them. Um, on the PCT, I would also like to share with uh, Professor Raman, Ambassador Raman, a study which was published recently about the impact of the adherence to PCT in the case of some Latin American countries. Maybe interesting for Bangladesh to know what the impact of uh, joining the PCT may, may be. So now let me just move uh, to our next and distinguished speaker. So I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce you, uh, Ambassador Raman uh, from Bangladesh, so a very thankful ambassador for uh, participating in, in this meeting. Ambassador Raman has had a leading role in uh, the recent fight in order to get the extension of the transition period for LDCs in the concept of TRIPS. As you mentioned, uh, is now working very hard in order to get uh, also a very important objective for LDCs and this extension of uh, all the specific measures under the WTO agreements. Uh, beyond graduation of, uh, of this country. This, this, this would be a very important measure in order to ensure that some policy space is available to LDCs uh, after graduation, which, which cannot be just the end of, this, uh, of the policy space that uh, these countries are enjoying. So Ambassador Raman, uh, thank you very much again uh, for uh, joining us and the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Korea. Um, Thanks for uh, all the uh, good words uh, you have said about me. Um, Mr. Uh, moderator, Excellencies, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me begin by thanking the South Center and uh, the Global Development Policy Center for inviting me to this uh, webinar. I find today's topic uh, very timely as uh, many countries across the globe are facing enormous challenges to access vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, and medical equipments to fight the COVID pandemic. Um, the learned speakers before me have already explained very eloquently and adequately the current situation of the Bangladesh pharma industry um, in presenting the two very well uh, researched topics, uh, one by GTP Center and the other by the South Center. So I can uh, barely comment on the on their presentation uh, or, or uh, add anything new from my end. Uh, um, I, I mean, I think much has already been said. Um, in general, it seems to me that the reports um, reflect the ground situation and, uh, and I find the recommendations in both the reports quite pertinent. Again, I'm not an expert um, in this field, so these presentations have only uh, enriched my understanding and knowledge in this uh, issue. So I will make a few general remarks and then share my own experience in steering to um, draft decisions in relevant committees of WTO and of LDCs that you, Mr. Korea, also mentioned uh, a while ago. So to begin with, the reports, I think rightly mentioned that uh, the Bangladesh's pharmaceutical sector is unique among the LDCs. And it has come a long way over the past three decades with an annual two two-digit growth rate, the pharmaceutical industry is now heading towards self-sufficiency in meeting local demand. I think now almost 98% or 97%. Um, so the GEGI uh, paper reveals that Bangladesh is the only LDC that exports of about 113 million, accounting for about 58% of the total export of LDCs, which is a very significant number. 
uh, in terms of uh, LDC share. I note that the reports have highlighted some challenges for Bangladesh's pharmaceutical sectors. And clearly the industry is facing two key challenges. And I could, uh, what I could decipher from the reports first is the sector heavily relies on imports for raw materials in the absence of local uh, APIs. And however, the good news is that the government is in the process of establishing API per to achieve self-sufficiency in, in, in API production. And second, that Bangladesh needs full-fledged bioequivalence test laboratories and clinical research. Currently, tests are conducted abroad at a higher price. So if it can be done locally, the cost of uh, medicines would be cheaper, undoubtedly. So as it is now well known that Bangladesh is due to be graduated from the LDC group in 2026, which has been mentioned by the speakers before me, the existing challenges of the pharmaceutical sectors, as I mentioned right now, would be exacerbated if Bangladesh does not receive adequate support after graduation from the global trade and development partners. And we will know according to Article 66.1 of the TRIPS Agreement, LDC enjoyed two types of transition period. General transition period has recently been extended, as we mentioned, till it is still valid till 1st of July, 2034. Um, uh, we worked very hard, I mean, to be honest, to get this uh, latest extension uh, approved by the TRIPS Council as the focal point of LDCs on this issue. In addition to the general transition, LDCs are waived from the obligation under TRIPS 70.8 and 70.9 for the fast products. You all know that it will expire in 1st January 2033, 34 in fact. So Bangladesh uh, has been greatly benefited from this exemption in developing its pharma sector, which has been revealed in two reports just presented. This specific exemption is not covered by the general extension. So as highlighted by others, after graduation is effective, Bangladesh will lose these benefits if the global communities does not continue to provide its waiver. So it will be a big loss, big issue for Bangladesh and a big blow to the pharma industry of, of Bangladesh. This also been uh, adequately uh, shared by uh, the speakers, both Professor Rahman and, and others. So being fully aware of the consequences and the imperative of continuation of the trade related support measures for Bangladesh and other LDCs, we submitted another draft at the General Council to continue to provide exemptions to the graduated LDCs for a certain period of time. Um, this will take uh, also, this will cover the extension, uh, uh, cover the pharma sectors as well. If you get a general uh, extension of uh, international support measures in the trade related areas. We initially proposed it to be 12 years, but we were flexible to consider the duration, which seems to be an issue of some of our uh, partners. So from where we come, in various UN resolutions and reports, UN has urged development and trading partners to continue to support, to continue support measures to graduated LDCs so that they can continue the development journey after their graduation, basically to allow smooth transition. Amongst them, most notable are UN resolution 59.209 uh, and 67 slash 221 on smooth transition strategy for countries graduating from the list of least developed countries. These are the encouragements and inspirations for us for submitting the draft decision on behalf of LDCs. Um, in this connection, let me share with you the challenges we faced during the negotiations of TRIPS extension transition um, and to have a reference to the graduated LDCs there. This will give a perspective how difficult it would be to get the extended transition for the graduated LDCs from the forthcoming MC12. On the TRIPS extension, after almost years of persuasion and heard negotiation, um, in June last year, uh, this year, we 
secured an extension for the next 13 years for the LDCs. But we had to drop the paragraph on the graduated LDCs. Few industrialist countries vehemently opposed any reference to graduated LDCs. As according to them, the Article 66.1 of the TRIPS Agreement does not permit discussion or consideration of issues of countries after graduation. Clearly, our understanding varies with them. However, for the sake of reaching a consensus, at the very last moment, we agreed to delete the reference. Um, the deadline of uh, the present transition about to was, was about to expire. And um, many of our, I mean, uh, fellow LDCs were afraid that if there's a legal vacuum, then we will be blamed for the, the failure of not being able to uh, have an extension of the transition. Oh, and, and they thought it will create a legal vacuum, as I said. But an understanding was raised. In, of course, it was informal. Um, that the members will allow continuation of discussion on the issue of, for the graduated LDCs under the general council where we already had a submission. So now here comes this, this submission, the second submission that I mentioned. It is under general committee of uh, WTO. In November, 2020, the LDC group WTO tabled a proposal in the general council for a ministerial decision with a request to continue existing support measures, including LDC specifics, special diversion treatment exemptions, technical assistance, capacity building, so on and so forth. And it was proposed to be of 12 years, as I mentioned earlier as well. We pleaded the WTO members that LDCs are not asking anything new, but simply continuation of the flexibilities already given to them. This submission has received a huge support from members, particularly from the developing South. However, some influential industrialized WT members are still opposing with the argument that the LDCs, all LDCs do not need um, uh, support after graduation, or even so not for all disciplines or sectors. So they are proposing to consider the issue on a case-by-case -case basis, not across the board. So this is, we call it horizontal approach. Um, we have been trying to convince them, saying that this will create a new approach which didn't exist in WTO thus far. It is cumbersome, arduous, and impacting, knowing the negotiating culture of WTO where hardly anything moves. It seems through our persistent engagement with the partners, um, we have been able to somehow persuade them that this approach is not working with them under WTO. The flexibilities, including trips, should be extended to all graduate LDCs to support their smooth transition. Uh, there was an issue with um, the duration I mean, uh, to some, the length was too long, it's too long, and such a long transition as proposed is unprecedented in any international forum. Our response was, we are flexible on the duration, provided the imperative of extension is accepted in principle. Given the position of our partners, particularly the largest economy, yet to take a position on this matter, we may have to go for a state-by-state -state approach, to be honest. Meaning we may try to grab the low-hanging fruits first and continue to discuss other issues like rules um, for a decision to be taken um, maybe in the next MC. We haven't completed our discussion within the LDC group um, on this particular um, approach. Um, and once we uh, complete our discussion within the group, we will take it to the larger group if we can agree on this approach. If the majority LDCs uh, still think that we can push for a full decision, 
from the MC12, then we we'll have, may have to go. So it's, it's, you know, it's a negotiation within the group and outside as well. And we also have to be pragmatic and practical, given the time span which is left before the MC12 is not very long. So, as you know, that this outcome, um, the outcome of this effort will have a direct bearing on the viability of, uh, of the rising pharma industry of Bangladesh. So coming back to the pharma sector, as I said earlier, I concur with most of the findings and comments. I would mention here just a few that I thought are very important and uh, deserve our serious attention. First, Bangladesh needs to continue to achieve consensus of all parties on LDC group submission in the WTO concerning extension of transition period, as I mentioned and explained um, in depth just a little while ago. Second, when Bangladesh graduates, its current IP law would require to be reviewed, focusing on several key factors, key areas, sorry, including the terms of protection of patents, conferring exclusionary rights to patent owners, patent uh, revocation procedures, and existing rules governing compulsory licensing. Third, Bangladesh should have to increase man manpower and uh, take measures for uh, necessary capacity building in order to conduct examinations of pharmaceutical patent applications. I mean, even after whatever transition you get, we have to be on your feet today or tomorrow. So this is a reality that we need to bear in mind. Fourth, Bangladesh would need to explore further how the bilateral, regional, and mega regional treaties are readjusted suitably so that its generic pharmaceutical industry continues to flourish. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I started my remarks with mentioning that the COVID-19 pandemic is, has destabilized the whole world, rich or poor. However, LDCs, including those on the path to graduation, have been hit hard by the downturn in global trade triggered by COVID-19. This is well researched and well documented. To overcome the difficulties confronting LDCs um, due to this crisis as well, LDCs need policy space, inter alia to access various technologies, resources, and other tools necessary to fight against the pandemic, including equitable access to medicines and vaccines. Taking account of such far-reaching impact of L uh, COVID-19, we hope that the LDC submission will be well-received, well-supported by the broader WTO membership, and other relevant trade and development partners. That's with that expectation, I would uh, end my uh, remarks. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Sorry, Kevin. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for this presentation, uh, for, for recalling us the how hit, how hard least developed countries have been hit by, by the COVID-19. Also, uh, for mentioning difficulties you have faced in the negotiation of the extension of the church waiver and the current situation with the new proposal that you have made. And as you must be certainly uh, ensure that the South Center will continue to, continue to support uh, Bangladesh and other least developed countries in, uh, in getting this uh, new measure in order to allow them to keep this policy space. By the way, uh, in a previous in a previous uh, webinar we organized jointly with uh, Dr. Gallagher, we actually discussed that uh, today developed countries industrialize on the basis of a very flexible policy framework, in particular in the area of intellectual property. And developing countries and least developed countries, in particular, should be given the same opportunity. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Then I would request uh, Kevin, Dr. Kevin Gallagher to moderate the following section on questions and answers. Kevin. Thank you, Carlos. And, uh, and let me also express my thanks to, to your excellency for those important comments. And thank you for the work that you're doing there uh, on the front lines of these, uh, of these issues. Uh, we have a, a good 15 minutes or so for questions and answers from all of you who have been so patiently listening to these insightful presentations. 
uh, you can enter a question in the bottom right-hand corner of the Zoom in the Q&A box. I see that there's a handful all in the chat on the side. I'll read though. I'll read a cluster of those to the panelists and ask them to um, ask them to answer while others are putting some in the Q and A box. I should also note: please go look at the chat because that is where you can get a copy of the two studies: the one from the South Center and the one from the GDP Center. I should note that the GDP Center study is also co-authored uh, with Warren Kaplan and Veronica Wirtz. Uh, both of whom are on hand to uh, to help answer any questions that that might come up with respect to their contributions to those to that paper. Um, let me while folks are putting questions in the Q and A box, I'll read a few that came in uh, on the chat side uh, during during the conversation that we had. Um, one of them is a, a question of well how. Uh, how has this been playing out in Bangladesh uh, in the midst of the of the COVID nineteen uh, and the COVID-19 crisis. Um, uh, 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 a person by the name of Rifat asked about uh, uh, how, this is, how this is really played out. Uh, Veronica adds that uh, uh, Remdesivir is an example where Bangladesh has been able to produce those medicines and is per permitted to export those to other LDCs. Uh, and uh, another person has mentioned that the JK uh, or JAK inhibitors have also been produced. It'd be great if the comment, if the panelists could comment on that. Um, we have a uh, question from uh, Rabiul Rabi, uh, who asks, Bangladesh has recently signed a COVID-19 vaccine co-production deal with China, fulfilling the domestic demand the country can also emerge as an exporter to other LDCs. What are the potential implications for COVID-19 vaccine production in case of termination of a TRIPS pharmaceutical wa waiver? Would that also curtail vaccine availability for LDCs? Um, and uh, maybe one more interesting one from, from Tom Cruz, Cruza who says uh, Bangladesh is also a leader in the vulnerable, gr vulnerable group of 20, uh, which is a group of 20 climate vulnerable countries that uh, works at the UN and the International Monetary Fund on advancing ambitious climate change policies. Uh, the question is, do these same trade rules that we're talking about, the WTO and TRIPS and so forth, prohibit ambitious climate policies in the same way that they prohibit uh, the pharmaceuticals policies that are noted in the in these studies, and should there be some sort of a trips waiver or extension uh, for countries to be able to address the climate crisis as well? Those are three three sets of big questions. Why don't we uh, any panelists that want to answer any of those, including your excellency, and uh, we can do another round after that if there's time. Can I comment on the climate issue? Please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just a question of what the technology is. If the technology of, for example, carbon sequestration, sequestration technology or solar panels or even genetically modified drought resistant plants is, is are patented, then I, I would imagine that they would fall under the same IP rules as, as pharma, pharmaceuticals. I think it just depends on the, whether the technology is patented. I can't speak to whether the, uh, there should be a global uh, <clears throat> patent, uh, I mean, co uh, trade response, which I think there should be for climate, but that's just, that's a separate question. Anyway, thank you. Can I, uh, Kevin? This is Mustafiz. Please. Okay. Uh, no, uh, I think uh, Warren has um, mentioned uh, the other uh, side of uh, this discourse is that uh, once we graduate, we will not also be able to access the LDC specific funds for climate change, for example, the LDC fund. So I think that to that extent, uh, this will have implications, not directly uh, for, from the TRIPS perspective, but from the aid for trade uh, and aid for climate perspective, there will be implications. Beyond 2026, no, no concessional funds from the, uh, from the specific LDC fund. So that is one. Uh, the other uh, issue that I wanted to mention is that yes, the 
example is is very well taken and also with regard to uh, the joint uh, venture with china uh, so if, so that will also provide us uh, for example uh, uh, to take advantage if it is produced in bangladesh uh, with uh, with a joint venture that also uh, we will be able to reap benefits of uh, the trips waiver and we will also have to remember that uh, along with the trips waiver bangladesh as an ldc also enjoys duty free quota free market access in almost all the countries so pharmaceutical goods which are produced here uh, also enjoy duty free access so that will also not be there beyond 2026 so i think that this aspect also have to be kept in mind and excellency had made a number of uh, um, uh, points uh, and I, I just in a, in a one minute i think he is very right that horizontal approach will be very cumbersome and we will not get anything out of that uh, excellency uh, that uh, the 13 year extension proposal now the current trips will be ending in end of 2032 so provided that there is no further extension uh, be, after bangladesh graduates it will be valid for seven years so the fallback position could also be seven years for example for for trips so so from a, a very practical perspective i was thinking thinking about that um, and uh, uh, well, and the last point that you made that we have to do our own homework, I think that it is so important. And I didn't want to discuss this uh, in this platform, but it's very true. For example, the API park that we are building, we are building it for the last eight years. Uh, so, so I think that we should do our own homework also in preparation of the graduation. And you are very right, whatever the extension uh, is made, it will come to an end. So, so our homework we'll have to do. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. May I come in, come in now? Please, Your Excellency. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll take uh, two questions basically, and um, and my namesake, Professor uh, Rahman, has uh, uh, made my uh, my um, my remarks easier. He has responded to mostly. So first, I will take the question on COVID-19, how we are managing. I think uh, we are doing uh, it quite well. Um, among uh, the countries in South Asia and beyond, I think uh, the way we managed our COVID uh, crisis, it was quite, quite well done. Um, and in terms of our contribution, not only um, in managing our own COVID situation, also elsewhere, you see, Bangladesh is one of the, in fact, the second largest exporter of garments. So what we did during the COVID time is that we reoriented our production line and started producing masks, PPE. And after meeting our own demand, we've been able to export it to many countries, even many advanced countries, even in the United States. So that was, I think, a great help to the global community. We used our capacity uh, and reoriented our capacity in producing the mask and PPE and export uh, those to, uh, to the world. Um, in terms of uh, the climate policies, and I think it has been answered nicely, on the vaccine production, yes, it will have an impact on vaccine production after Bangladesh graduates out of LDC group. And uh, precisely bearing this in mind, I think um, a, the, the proposal of TRIPS waiver uh, during the, uh, in managing the COVID pandemic is, is being considered now, as you know, that India and South Africa jointly proposed, and we all joined. In fact, Bangladesh together with the entire LDC group joined as a co-sponsor to this proposal. So if we can get this approved by this MC12, Perhaps the problem with this uh, IP issue in tackling the COVID pandemic will be easier uh, or resolved. Uh, and finally, on the comments of Professor Rahman about seven years, well, I don't want to disclose any figure now. Uh, we just uh, proposed 12 years, 
and uh, you know any figure is subject to be negotiated. Um, so we are ready to negotiate and see how far we can uh, secure. It's a long process, uh, but we are not um, uh, tired. We will continue to pursue to get as long a duration of transition as possible for us and for all embassies. Thank you. Professor Correa or uh, Nirmalia, any, any comments uh, from these questions or perhaps uh, closing remarks? We, we only have a few more minutes. Um, I have a question I can see on the chat box about the practical impact of uh, the lack of patent office HR capacity. Um, if a patent application that if allowed would get expi would expire before it gets a chance to be examined in Bangladesh, then what happens? So um, if a patent expires before it gets a chance to be examined, then um, uh, uh, then obviously the, the patent will not run. But, the, but what we need to understand is that once a patent application is filed, the, um, the, the, that in itself gives, uh, gives a presumption of validity in, in the sense that a generic which would come in to the market could be taken to court on the ground that there is a pending, pending patent application at this stage. And if the patent then finally um, gets granted, there would be um, uh, there would be consequences thereof uh, on that basis. The issue is that once Bangladesh, this is not a problem at the moment for Bangladesh because it, every uh, pharmaceutical patents are suspended. But once um, Bangladesh graduates and pharmaceutical patent suspension has to be revoked. Um, and, and they will have to start examining applications which they have already received. And there will be new applications which are coming in. And if they are, uh, Bangladesh becomes a member of the PCT, this, there will be a significant spike. Now, uh, with the limited capacity, what will, um, and, and this, has, this is not just the case of Bangladesh, this has happened in, as Professor Kuria was mentioning about uh, the, this report, uh, uh, this other study on the, on the impact of the PCT system is that it has, uh, the PCT accession has, uh, it, uh, has resulted in, um, patent offices in many countries being flooded with um, uh, patent applications, which they are unable to handle. This is a problem for even some of the well-resourced patent offices, um, uh, uh, the, the backlog problem. Now, um, this will uh, also translate into um, uh, 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 sort of a test of the efficiency of the patent office, of the number of patents that get granted, and speed will be of, of disposal of the applications will become key. And uh, in uh, the, the rush to dispose of the, of, the, of the patent applications in the wake of the surge that, that will be experienced, it is very likelihood, as has happened in, in patent offices in many other countries, that patents of uh, questionable validity uh, uh, get granted as a result. And unless this patent is uh, subsequently challenged in a court of law, the patent remains valid. Um, and um, in um, uh, developing countries, uh, the, uh, the, the court litigations itself take a lot of time. So, so those are factors that uh, could, could have adverse implications on, on access as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any closing remarks, Professor Correa? Well, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. I think it's been uh, excellent. Thank you very much again for the presentations made. I think the very important issues have been highlighted. Let me just um, reiterate that the South Center is very much available in order to continue supporting Bangladesh and other least developed countries. In the first place now to get this extension of the uh, special measures under WTO agreements and also in order to support the capacity of uh, Bangladesh to develop a new intellectual property policy. So in the new context of a graduated country, it will be necessary to develop a strategy for intellectual property that supports and not undermines uh, development of local industries. So we're very happy also to work on that. In particular, patent policy will be key for the pharmaceutical sector avoidance of the so-called evergreening patents or secondary patents, uh, increasing the capacity of uh, patent examiners to look uh, carefully at what uh, patents are filed and to ensure that uh, patent is granted when there is real inventive step and novelty. This is not 
unfortunately the case in, in many cases in which patents are granted without any real contribution to the technological pool. So there, are, there is a lot of work to do in order to ensure this. And finally, uh, Ambassador Raman also mentioned the implications of uh, other agreements, uh, regional um, or bilateral free trade agreements. It would be very important to avoid that uh, these agreements erode the three flexibilities and other flexibilities that may exist under other WTO agreements. Uh, so certainly it is something that needs, needs also to be look, look at. And, and finally, uh, the investment agreements, that's an important issue too. Uh, as, you, as you may know, uh, most investment agreements consider intellectual property as a protected asset. And there are already cases in which uh, these in bilateral investment agreements have been used in order to try and block uh, the capacity of the um, parties, one, one of the parties in order to take action, for instance, revocation of a patent. Uh, in, the case, in the case of, uh, of Canada. So it would also be quite important to look at these uh, policies in a holistic manner. So thank you very much, uh, Kevin, for uh, organizing this, this meeting of the South Center. And thank you, the speakers, again. A lot of us uh, mentioned MC12 with his coming, coming in a few months. But next week and the week after are actually a big time to be debating many of these issues as the WTO hosts what it's called its public forum. I invite everyone to go to the WTO uh, webpage to look at the public forum and come to many of the webinars where many of these issues will be discussed. In fact, uh, Professor Correa and I uh, will be on a panel next Friday on the TRIPS waiver where we continue the conversation that we've had, to had today. Uh, but that's it for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. The, both papers are in the chat here. I want to thank uh, Professor Mustafa Zia Rahman, Warren Kaplan, Nirmalia Siam, Rachel Thrasher, Veronica Wartz, uh, Carlos Correa, and of course, uh, the ambassador for coming and being part of this important conversation. Uh, hopefully, uh, many of the recommendations that come out of this strong empirical work uh, will come to fruition so that Bangladesh and other countries around the world have the policy space to build the industrial capacities to fight these crises that we are undergoing right now. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. So Thank, much. You. Thank you. Excellency, see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. definitely. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.